I'm Dr. Stephen Robinson. I'm Curriculum Quality Manager for Humanities at Lewis Campus. My colleagues and I are going to tell you a little bit about the subjects we offer in Humanities. That's philosophy, history, law, politics and geography. Philosophy. What is philosophy? Here's the clue. It's all in the question mark. Questions, questions, questions. But what sort of questions? Questions about what? Here's an example. What does the word existence mean? To be or not to be. Is that really the question? What does it mean? To be. To exist. René Descartes said, cogito ergo sum, I am thinking, therefore I exist. But was he right about that? Is our existence to be thinking things? Bishop George Barclay argued, to be is to be perceived. But wait a minute, doesn't that mean that if something's not being perceived, it doesn't exist? Strangely, Barclay thinks there is no material existence beyond our minds and our ideas. But while we talk about existence, there's a more fundamental question. Why does anything exist? Why is there something rather than nothing? That's the fundamental question of the branch of philosophy called metaphysics. Epistemology, on the other hand, is concerned with questions about knowledge. What is knowledge? Can we define it? How do we gain knowledge? Does it all come from experience? Or do we have any innate ideas? Do we have any knowledge? Perhaps we don't know anything. Isn't that sentence self-defeating? And then moral philosophy. When we say something was a morally good thing to do, by virtue of what is it morally good? Is it, for example, about getting the best consequences? Here's a classic thought experiment. It's called the trolley problem. It was graphically depicted on the Netflix program, The Good Place. Look it up on YouTube, it's really grisly. There's a runaway tram and five people on the line. You have your hand on the lever. You could pull the lever and divert the tram to kill one person on another line. What should you do? Look at it from another perspective. If you think the right thing to do would be to sacrifice one to save five, perhaps that's because you agree with the principle the greatest good for the greatest number. Let's try that principle in another setting. You're a doctor. You have five terminally ill patients that all need transplants. Would you pull the lever on one healthy person to distribute their organs amongst these five so they can carry on living? Does that feel like a comfortable solution? Come and study philosophy. Find out how philosophers have thought about these questions. And most importantly, learn the skills to enable you to think through the problems for yourself. Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm the politics teacher at the Lewis campus. I've been teaching history and politics A-level for something like 12 years now, probably a little bit more, and I've been teaching for about 18 years in total. So what is politics? What is it we actually cover and what is it we look at? In year one, we look at what is democracy? Okay, so democracy means lots of different things to different people, but we live in a country that is considered democratic. And so when, when there are demonstrations about Black Lives Matter, Extinction Rebellion, as you see in the picture there, then that's part of our democracy. So what we look at is, is, is our democracy any good? Does it work? We look at political parties and what they believe in. We look at different elections and why people vote uh, the way they do, that kind of thing. We also look at how decisions are made in this country, who makes them, who has the most power, 
uh, in our government? Is it the Prime Minister? Is it Parliament? Is it somebody else or someone, something else? So we look at that. It is about power. Who has the power? Uh, who doesn't? Who'd like the power? And how decisions are made. In year two, we look at ideologies. So we look at conservatism, socialism, liberalism and nationalism and just find out about the key ideas for each of those ideologies and how do they fit in to today's world. We also look at global politics. So we look at which countries are powerful. We look at what is globalisation. We look at how safe our world is today and the way decisions are made by countries. Um, do they work together? What happens when things go wrong? How big a threat uh, are things like terrorism, nuclear, the use of nuclear weapons and global warming? So we cover quite a bit there. It's, it's good, interesting stuff. But what are the main requirements? If you want to study politics, I think the main thing is that you do need good writing skills. You'll need five GCSEs, including uh, at least a four in English. There are three exams at the end of year two, and so it is a, a writing based course. So you will need good writing skills. You also will need an interest in the news and world affairs. What's going on? So right there, you've got a picture of the, the Brexit and anti Brexit demonstrations of last year. So you would need to be interested in those things really to study politics. Also, you need to be willing to listen to a range of opinions and to voice your own opinion. We do like discussions and debates in politics. It's key to it, really. How well does it fit in with my other courses? It fits well with humanities, social sciences, or makes a, a good change, a pleasant change, if you're doing the sciences and want something a bit different. Why? Because we're looking at real world stuff. These are things that are happening in the news. We always link into the news that's happening at the moment. And so right here, obviously, you've got our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, Dominic Cummings, a couple of weeks ago, he's, a, he's an advisor to Boris Johnson. And some people feel that he maybe has too much power. Is he maybe running the government? That may or may not be true, but those are the things we look at. If you do politics at A-level, it's a, a very highly thought of subject at university. Universities like it because it's a facilitating subject. What they like is the range of skills it gives you. You have good writing skills. You can demonstrate that you can construct a good argument and you use analysis and evaluation. They're all skills that are valued very highly by universities. Also, employers like them. So it's good for if you go from A level to straight into employment, they like politics. It shows that you can analyze, evaluate and construct a good argument. I do have a Google Classroom. So if you log in, OK, the code is there, FGAV2NW. I post a lot of things linked to what's going on in the news at the moment. There are all kinds of tasks for you to do if you wish, uh, and lots of fun links and interesting links for the course ahead. Finally, what books do I need to buy? I certainly recommend the orange book there, the revision guide. It covers everything you need for year one and year two. And it's great come uh, the end of year two for revising everything we've done. The year one, one I recommended is McNaughton there. They're both about 20, 25 quid. Okay, so they're worth having a look at both on Amazon. Okay, that's it. If you have any questions going forward, please just ask me in the Q&A. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, my name's Andrea, and I want to tell you why I think geography matters. Um, we all have a sense of place. That sense of place is based on geography. It's based on how we feel in the space around us and the culture to which we are exposed. This is my sense of place now. This is where I am happiest. This is where I'm most settled. This is where I've raised my family. What is your sense of place? What is it at present? Will it change? Do you want it to change? Over my life, I've seen many changes. Changes in nature, um, the loss of woodland, the loss of ponds, less life in the rock pools, less life in fields, more buildings, more vehicles. The road behind me is a testament to that. When I moved here, you couldn't hear the traffic at all. All you could hear was frogs from the valley. So 
that's a massive change. And then there's technology. I won't even get started. You can't probably imagine just having three TV channels. When I was younger, I lived in Iran. I lived there before and during the revolution. And I saw such changes there. And I think that was what gave me my interest in human geography and human issues. Seeing the difference in culture, seeing the extremes of poverty and wealth. All those changes, you'll see changes in your life. Three weeks before this current crisis, my second years were looking at scenarios of how the world might change by 2030. One of those scenarios saw our world as a series of isolated and self-reliant countries, mainly because of a global pandemic that came out of China in 2023. Well, imagine two weeks later when we were actually looking at that same crisis, but instead of 2023, it was 2020. And what a year this has been. We have seen so many changes. My PowerPoint presentation shows you a map of the spread of COVID. And you can see it's proportional. The larger the country, the more the spread. And those countries are linked by their connectiveness, by their globalization. At present, there is a swarm of locusts devastating parts of Africa and India. We've yet to see what impacts that will have on food security. And more recently, the passionate movements of the Black Lives Matter. Um, joined by other minority groups, other groups that feel that they are not listened to, they are discriminated against. So you're seeing this change happening now, this change that we, we are facing, how we're going to change to learn about our history, to learn about our geography, how we're going to face changes teaching that. I feel that recently geography handles that well. We do not shy away from those issues. We look at issues of globalization, colonialization, um, development issues. So we are seeing changes. We are seeing changes in environmental awareness. We recycle more. We're more aware of plastics. We are taking care of our environment. We are adapting. Recently, the cyclone Anfam in Bangladesh, they responded better than they ever have before because they have adapted to these conditions. Um, here in this country, we are seeing comedians and footballers a raising awareness, raising consciousness of people to look after minority groups that would otherwise be neglected by governments. So, you are involved. This could not have happened when I was younger. These are movements that are happening because of global connectivity. You now are aware. You now are involved. If you feel passionate about these issues and changes in your world, come and join me teaching and learning geography. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Brooks and I teach History A-Level at Lewis. I know that some of you are just coming to the end of your year 10 at school and some of you have had the strangest end to year 11 ever. Whatever stage you are at, I'm really pleased that you are thinking of studying history at A-level. Despite the fact that you haven't taken any exams, you will still be getting grades for your GCSEs. You can see from this slide that English language is particularly important for studying history because there is a lot of reading and writing to do. We will be studying four different units. In your first year, we will look at two countries that were governed by communist leaders, the USSR and China. We'll look at things like how they were governed, who made decisions, how the economy worked. Why did Stalin have more tractors made than there were tractor drivers in the country? And how did one factory manage to only make Wellington boots for the left feet? We'll look at how people were forced or encouraged into doing what the leaders wanted and how things changed for young people and families. In the second year, you will do a piece of coursework looking at how Stalin became the leader of the USSR when no one expected him to. Then we do one other unit that looks at how Britain became a democratic nation 
whereby all adults have the vote and working class people are beginning to become MPs. If you are in year 11 now, it is very important that you sign up to the Google Classroom that has been set up for all of you who will be studying History A-Level at Lewis next year. This is where you will find the work that you need to do over the summer so that you are ready to start work in September. You will also see any information that we need to get out to you. You need to go to Google Classroom and enter the code that is on this slide. However, history is not just about learning about what happened. We have to ask questions about the past. For example, the statue thrown into the harbour at Bristol just a few weeks ago was of a man who had put a lot of his money into schools, hospitals and homes for the elderly. But his riches came mostly from setting people into slavery. So did the means not justify the ends? In the sea off the coast of Crimea, there are lots of statues of Lenin, Stalin and to other communist leaders. Is this where they should be? The USSR changed from a highly unequal society under the Tsars, where most people lived in great poverty, while the leaders lived in enormous luxury, to a society that could resist the Nazi invasion and worked for equality. Yet millions died on the way, and people were unable to obtain uncensored news, worship freely, or join a political party other than the Communist Party. So, should the leaders be forgotten? Or should they be thrown into the sea? Or should they be remembered for the good that they achieved? Did they do more harm than good? How would you rate the millions who died under Chairman Mao's leadership of China compared to his imposing the ending of foot binding, bringing in equality in marriage between husbands and wives? and introducing an alphabet throughout the country that meant that people could finally learn to read and write with some ease. You will have to decide on issues like this. History tells us about the past, but also a lot about our lives now. Look at how Russia, China and Britain have responded to the coronavirus very differently. Well, once you have completed this A-level course, you will see that none of the decisions made by these countries are at all surprising. I do hope that you have a lovely summer, even if you can't do all the things you might like to, and I look forward to seeing you in September. Do email me if you have any questions. And here's that code to the Google Classroom once more. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Jinks and I'm the law teacher at Lewis College. I've been at the college since February of 2019, since leaving the legal profession, and this will be my second full year teaching at Lewis College. In law, we study three main areas in the first year. The first being the English legal system, which is how laws are made. The second being criminal law, which are non-fatal offences against person. And finally, tort law, which is the study of civil wrongs, including noise, damage and negligence. Studying law is all about togetherness working together to save people and create justice. And here we have four of our first year students who are going to tell us about what they enjoy most about studying law. Chelsea is our course rep and says that she enjoys classroom debates and hearing others' opinions to create a balanced argument. This has led to her really improving her confidence. Nathan also enjoys the debates and enjoys being able to work in teams, which creates a fun but engaging learning environment and a positive morale. Jack says he enjoys interaction between students and teachers and has felt really supported during his time at Lewis College, which has inspired him to work even harder to achieve the grades that he needs. And Megan agrees, feels that she's been supported by classmates and her teachers, but in an enjoyable classroom setting, which has led to her achieving an A recently in her law mock, proven that there's no limit to your potential here. So what do I need to study law? Goes without saying that you need good writing skills, you need five GCSEs, which includes at least a six in English, whether that be literature or language. You need the ability to decipher information, reading criminal reports and stating whether you think there's a crime or not, and the ability to create a reasoned, evidenced argument. So being able to put your point across. So parents, if your child's good at arguing or chatting back, this might just be the course for them. After studying here, 
Generally, it's the assumption that you'll go on to study law or criminology at university. But there are other doors that can be opened, including becoming a paralegal, police officer, or even getting involved with legal apprenticeships. So to get ready for the start of law A-level course, we have a Google Classroom page. The code is underneath and is ASUGJZP and will be updated with regular content. So what's unique about studying law? Law will generally be in the classroom. However, there are other exciting opportunities, such as societies. In September, we're looking at opening and starting a mooting society, where you'll be able to play out a real life scenario in a competitive yet fun court-like experience. Secondly, there's the opportunity for trips alongside the criminology class, and this will be a great opportunity to come to Lewis as well. We have a Crown Court right on the doorstep, which is free to enter, so you can go and see as many cases as you wish. And finally, no lesson will ever be the same. Every lesson is different, insightful, hardworking, yet fun, as you heard from the students earlier. There are not many additional costs. We ask that you get these two books, the book on the left being the textbook for the year, and the book on the right is a fantastic revision guide. Both of these can be purchased on Amazon and around 20 to 25 pound. So that's just a little bit about law. Thank you for listening and uh, join us for our live Q&A session. If you have any questions, please ask.